Hello again guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, as you can see, we'll be taking another trip out in the PMDG DC-6. I have to say, I've been having an absolute blast flying the DC-6 so far. It's really all I've flown in the sim since I picked it up. And I thought that you guys might enjoy seeing another flight out in the aircraft. So, as you can see, we're currently sat on the ground at a rather dreary Coventry airport in the United Kingdom. We are in an Air Atlantique cargo DC-6. And we're going to be making a quick run over to the Isle of Man with the morning's mail. Our route for the flight today will be departing out of Coventry off runway 05, making a right turn out towards the west heading towards the Honolulu VOR. Then we'll track northwest bound up towards the Wallasey VOR, passing over the cities of Birmingham and Liverpool. And then we'll head over the water on towards the Isle of Man. In terms of the plan for our flight today, we've got about 7 metric tonnes of mail on board the aircraft. As you can see, the route distance just a little bit over 200 nautical miles. We'll be cruising our way over to the Isle of Man at 12,000 feet. Weather-wise, a pretty wet morning here in Coventry. As you can see, there's probably going to be some weather en route as well, but things should start to clear up as we approach the Isle of Man. Expecting quite possibly some icing conditions en route, but currently the weather at the Isle of Man pretty decent, the cloud base around 1,500 feet and 10 kilometres of visibility. We've nominated Liverpool as our alternate, the weather is much the same there. And in terms of our fuel upload, we'll be taking what's on the plan, so we're taking 2,438 kilos, which works out to be around 5,400 pounds. Anyway guys, as always, I do hope you enjoy the video and the flight. If you do, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. If you have any comments or questions for me, you can leave those down in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to answer them. We'll now head up the stairs into the cockpit of the DC-6, we'll get ourselves sat down, and we'll begin our preparation. So welcome once again to the cockpit of the PMDG DC-6. I really enjoyed my time out in the aircraft last time and it seems like most of you did as well. So I thought we'd take another hop out in the aircraft, as I say this time up to the Isle of Man. We're just running some freight again, we've just got on board the aircraft and closed up the main door. We haven't done a whole lot more at the moment, we're on the uh, ground power at the moment and we've just set up our altimeters. So we'll run through some of our preliminary cockpit preparation before we hand things over to our automatic flight engineer. Coming up to the overhead panel then, we'll get the beacon on, we'll be starting the engines very shortly. No smoking and seatbelt signs can come on. Inverters can go on and the engine instruments can go on to normal. Generators can come on. We'll open up the cow flaps for the engine start. We'll set up the cabin pressurisation system. So we'll be cruising our way over to the Isle of Man at a uh, flight level of 120 today. Or rather an altitude of 12,000 feet. We'll stick with the SIMS altimeter settings. So there's 12,000 feet set. We're looking at a cabin altitude of just above 2,000 feet. Fuel tank selectors can come on to the mains. get the cabin heat master on and lastly and I don't know if this is accurate or not to the real world aircraft but I find that the ground power unit doesn't seem to have enough grunt to actually get the engine started so we'll come on to the aircraft battery and we'll disconnect the ground power unit and now we'll hand things over to our automatic flight engineer for the before start checks completed Voice recorder. Tested. Oil coolers and cow flaps. Auto end position. Fuel and fluids. Checked. Pressurization. Set. Manifold and duct pressure. Checked. Radios. Checked. So the main door is secure, we'd wait for confirmation from the ground for the rest of the aircraft doors. Closed. Door warning lights. Out. Gear pins. Removed. Three on board. Seat belts and pedals. Adjusted. Throttles. Set to idle. Propellers. 
forward at three. Five two eight three, Roger, that's not a departure, it's time to five over one two. Before start checks complete. Start engines. So we are now ready for the start. We'll be starting the number three engine first, so the mixture control lever can go to the auto rich position. Igniters for the number three engine can go on to both. The start selector is in the number three position, the booster pump is set to low. And we'll engage the starter. Press 283, turn left track 2. Pass it, Irish 3. 6. 9. 12. Booster coil can come on, and the primer. And we have a good start on the number 3 engine, the oil pressure has come up. Just keeping on our RPM there, keeping the engine below 1000. And the rest of the T's and P's looking good. Just rock the throttles back there just to again keep the engine below 1000 RPM. And starting the number 4 engine. So again, mixture control lever to auto rich. Igniters onto both. Start selector to number 4. Boost pump to low. And engaging the starter. 3. 6. First 2 at 1 is in 5 on the first. 9. Boost to coil on, primer on. And a good start on number 4 there as well. Again the oil pressure has come up into the green. And the rest of the T's and P's looking good. A little bit wet and miserable outside but just so that we can see the engine start in a little bit more detail. Watch those lovely double wasp radial engines fire up. We'll get the cockpit window opened up. We'll start the number 2 engine. And again back up to the overhead panel, number 2 igniters on. Start selector over to engine 2. Boost pump on to low. And engaging the starter. Three. Boost coil on, primer on. And there she goes. And again, just walking the throttles back, number 4 engine there, just creeping over 1000 RPM. All pressure is checked. T's and P's looking good, so we'll start the number 1. And same again, mixture to auto rich. Igniters on both. Booster pump to low. Start selector to one and engaging the starter. Three. Six. And another good start. So again the oil pressure has come up, T's and P's looking good, as you can see it's only about 12 degrees outside, it's a pretty wet miserable day so we'll get that window closed up again. And coming back to the overhead panel, the engine selector can go to off, boost pumps can go back to off for now. And the number 4 just creeping up above 1000 RPM again there. Anyway we have 4 good starts, we'll start setting up the cockpit for our departure. So initially we'll be tracking out off runway 05 towards the Honolulu VOR. That's on a frequency of 113.65. Ground United 22, so we'll tune that up. Then it'll be out towards the Wallace VOR, that's 1141, we'll tune that up on Nav 2. 
and we'll get that in the standby as well. Initial heading out towards Honley will be a heading of 264, so we'll tune that up on the OBS. So it's 264. And just the traffic frequency here at uh, Coventry, so we'll tune that up. 12383. So we'll actually be powering back off the stand here onto the main taxiway, onto taxiway Alpha. Obviously, in reality, we would uh, like to have someone walking us back, making sure that everything is clear. And we'll be taking it really nice and slow as well. It does seem though here at Coventry there's a little bit of an upslope coming onto the main taxiway, so we'll carry a little bit more speed than usual, just to uh, make sure we don't lose our momentum. Anyway, we'll carry out our after-start checks, and then we'll call traffic and tell them we're taxiing out for runway 05. Start selected, bus pumps. Off and off. Battery switch. Plane benching. Generators and inverters. Checked and on. Emergency lights. Bombed. Ground power. Removed. After start checks complete. So that's the after start checks done. As I say, we'll call up ground. We'll be using runway 05. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. Paris 283, hold with your speed in the crew. Coventry Traffic Air Atlantique 6 is taxiing to runway 05. Okay, so we'll come back to idle on the uh, throttles. Part brake can come off, we'll just hold the aircraft on the brakes momentarily. And we'll engage the reverses. So just slowly feeding in the power. Get the aircraft moving. And we'll start a gentle turn, swinging the nose out to the left. As I say, just powering back onto uh, taxiway Alpha, which is the taxiway just off our left wing here. And we'll come back into the idle detent on the throttles and start feeding in some power just to slow the aircraft down. We don't really want to use the brakes if we can avoid it. So you'll see looking at the uh, the wind sock, the wind definitely favouring runway 23 at the moment, but we're going to take runway 05 as I say. Obviously you don't generally like to be taking off with the tailwind, but for the sake of today's video we're going to take runway 05 for a couple of reasons. Firstly the real world wind at the moment is coming out from the west, but it's only 5 knots, so we can definitely live with that. We've got over 6,500 feet of runway here at Coventry, so we'll be fine with 5 knots of tailwind. And similarly, the main reason really is just to keep the uh, taxi time down for the video. If we take off runway 23, then we're going to have to uh, backtrack most of the runway. And that's going to take obviously an awful long time, so we'll just taxi, as I say, up on uh, taxiway Alpha and we'll hold short runway 05. And then we'll carry out our before takeoff checks. I just copied the uh, traffic So it's pretty wet and miserable here at Coventry. The uh, temperature is above 10 degrees Celsius at the moment, so we won't need any uh, anti icing systems just yet. But we'll almost certainly need to take those in the climb. Similarly, I don't think we'll bother with the uh, the windshield wipers. There's not really enough rain to warrant it at the moment. Anyway, here's the holding point for runway 05, as you can see. So we'll just inch our way a little bit further forward. And now on the brakes. Part brake can go on. Another quick look at the engine T's and P's there. Oil pressure, no need to worry there at the moment. We're back at low RPM for now. We'll get the before takeoff checks done. Boost pumps. 
boost pumps on low. Fuel selector and crossfeed. Main tanks and crossfeed off. Autopilot and carbine. I just moved the Off and cold. Hydraulic system. Down, forward, pressure and quantity checked. Okay. Flaps 20. So just waiting on the flaps to run out to 20 degrees. Flaps set 20. Windows and turbine. Closed and on. Controls. Dust lock released. Free. Bridge and locked, set. Transponder. On. Landing lights. Ground United 22 heavy, ready for attack. Just waiting on the landing lights to extend and then the AFP will get those on for us. Extended and on. Before takeoff checks complete. Okay, just before we line up, we'll do a quick flight control check. So let's fall back. Full forward. Neutral. Full left. Full right. And neutral. And the rudders. Full left. Full right. And neutral. We'll call up traffic, we'll tell them that we're departing. Runway 05 out to the west. Traffic Air Atlantique 6 taking off runway 05 departure to the west. Obviously not great weather conditions, but from what we can see it looks to be clear on final. Fire brake can come off. Slowly coming up on the throttles to get the aircraft moving. And on second thoughts, we will take those windshield wipers just to show them off a little bit in the sim. Another quick check on final. Looks to be clear. And it's runway 05 confirmed. Very dull and dreary day here on the ground in Coventry. Just coming up on about 20 past 6 local. Power United 22 heavy is holding short runway 3 left. So we are now ready for the takeoff. Just as a reminder, we're departing runway heading initially, and then it'll be a right turn almost through 270 degrees to track 264 inbound towards the Honolulu VOR. That'll be a very short leg, only about seven miles, and then we'll track outbound on the 321 radial up towards Wallasey. Dry takeoff today. Our takeoff weight's only about uh, 79,000 pounds. So we'll have the AFE run through the takeoff dry procedures. So coming up on the throttles now, we'll let the engine stabilise initially at 30 inches manifold pressure. Good night, 2-2, uh, good morning, line up runway 2-8 left. Line up runway 2-8 left, United. 30 inches, stabilised. T's and P's looking good. Cal flaps, Cal flaps set. Full power please. Going full power. And there's our 40 inches, feet off the brakes. 
V1 is 83 knots, VR will be 101 knots. Says V1. And rotate. Just tracking out over the motorway initially, as you can see. Keeping the nose nice and low until we get up to a speed of 265 knots. And now the gear's up, we'll get the wipers off. Now just coming up through 500 feet, so we'll start our right turn now. Climbs up. Climbs going up. United 227, 15, 6, 9, it's not really a day you want to be manually flying, so we'll get the gyro pilot in. Turn the unit on and engage the clutch. Just keep trimming forward there, the uh, speed dropping a little bit lower than we'd like. Again, we want to be climbing around 165 knots. And again, just continuing to come forward on that gyro pilot wheel. We'll let the speed build back up. Climb power is set. And TCP is looking good. Just coming through 200 degrees. And we're looking for a heading of 265. And coming up through 4,000 feet now. Still in the uh, weather at the moment. OAT now is just coming below 10 degrees Celsius, so we'll get the anti-ice systems on. Filling your brow with the kilo in the morning. And we'll come around onto a heading of about uh, 290 here to join back onto the radial. Coming up through 5,000 feet now, the speed looking good. We've got about 9 miles there to track inbound towards Honolulu. We'll level up the turn now. Just ease forward again on that gyro pilot wheel. 
doing about 1500 feet a minute range to climb at the moment, so that's pretty good. And we are tracking inbound again towards the uh, 265. Radio. Emergency active, all frequencies, 2000 feet, Have a quick look at the pressurization system. Cabin altitude hasn't started increasing just yet, but the differential pressure is still pretty low there at the moment, so expecting that to kick in fairly soon. Hey, good morning, get over to 2-2, heavy leaving at 3,700 full level 9-0. 2-2, just under the pressure, front of And coming up through 7,000 feet now, so we've got another 5,000 feet to go. Six miles to run to Honolulu. Still in all the muck and the rain and the weather at the moment. Level 120, and again, just periodically glancing over at the engine temperatures and pressures. OAT is just coming down to 0 degrees Celsius there as well now. Showing 270 on the RMI, so another 5 degrees to go. And just coming onto that radial now, as you can see. And once we're overhead Honolulu, we'll be turning right onto a heading of 321. We'll do that a mile or so early just to avoid maybe shooting the VOR. Yeah, Speed's still looking good, coming up on 9,000 feet, so another 3,000 feet to go. It'd be nice if we cleared all this weather, but it's not looking too promising at the moment. And two miles to run down to the VOR. Differential pressure still coming up from the uh, cabin altitude there at the moment. And just passing over the station now, so we'll start that turn onto our heading of 321. We'll set that off on the OBS. There's 10,000 feet. Landing lights are off. And there's our heading of 321. We're picking up the Wallace VOR there as well. You can see 80 miles to run there. So we'll switch over VORs from about 40 DME from Honolulu. And again, the radial just starting to come in. As it does, we'll go into localizer mode on the gyro pilot. And there's 1,000 feet to go. As I say, unfortunately it doesn't look like we're going to uh, clear our way through the weather here, which is a bit of a shame. The weather should be somewhat nicer though once we get over towards the Isle of Man. Just start reducing that vertical speed now. Slowly coming in there on the OBS. And 300 feet to go, so we'll keep a really good eye on our altitude. And that uh, radial now. 
Get ready to arm up both of the modes on the gyro pilot. Uh, level 100 for 100, 300 degrees on the enemy. Second is the day, and second one, direct to Reznor. One, six, zero, direct to Reznor, United. And it looks like we're going to uh, capture both our altitude and our radio exactly at the same time, so we'll do both of those once we head down to the gyro pilot. So we're going to localise the mode and we'll set altitude hold. Let the speed come up to around 210 knots and then we'll come back to our cruise power setting. Just take a quick look at the uh, the wing there, check that we're not icing up. Doesn't look to be an issue at the moment, just a tiny bit of ice looks to be uh, forming on the tip of the prop spinner there. We'll keep a good eye on that. Oh, 18 hours is about uh, minus five degrees, but we've got all of the uh, systems on, of course. And that speed very slowly creeping up. Possibly going to have a slightly lower cruising speed here if we have accumulated any ice. Anyway, that more or less looks like the top speed we're going to get out of the uh, the aircraft today, so we'll come back to our cruise power setting. Set cruise power, please. Setting cruise power. To uh, 5 Victor, Victor, report of speed to Dublin 6, you want to be in the middle of 5 Victor. Dublin 1 to 2, 5 Victor, uh, 3 and 5 Victor, 6. Press 20 Victor, back to 5 Victor. 0, 4, 4, 9, Dormition, Echo. So the FE is just set cruise power again, having a good look at the engine temperatures and pressures. He should shortly be bringing the mixtures back to auto lean as well. And there they go. So good on the cruise checks, temperatures and pressures look good, we're burning about 600 pounds per hour on each engine at the moment, so about 2400 pounds an hour altogether. Now we've got about 4800 pounds of fuel to get us over towards the Isle of Man. Looks like we're doing about 180, 590 here in the cruise, which as I say is a little bit slower than normal, so it seems like perhaps we have picked up a little bit of icing here. Not a whole lot we can do though, it's not really worth our time climbing, it doesn't look like that's going to do much for us anyway and it's a very short sector so we'll be descending not too long from now and similarly as we saw the cloud base is pretty low over the UK mainland so that's not going to do us too many favours either. So we're a little bit stuck here at the moment but we'll uh, make our way over towards the Isle of Man, we're currently 20 miles out from Honolulu. we'll change over to the Wallasey VOR in about 20 miles time. As usual we'll briefly head outside the aircraft not going to be a whole lot to see at the moment, probably, but we'll uh, hopefully catch something as we head over the uh, English coastline. And I'll come back to you again just before the top of descent down towards the Isle of Man. We'll get the aircraft set up for the arrival. Good morning, Charlie 283, Airborne, take the Grand Pass, 1005, Season 4, Devil Seas, heading 270, and the squad is 7655. Roger, that's not a departure, and that's just Find level 120, Irish station. Irish 283, turn left for 27. Good morning, Irish 281, passing through 1500 feet to 4000 feet. I am on heading 270 out of bounds, cross flight. First two eight one is the spot on the charger, that's level one two zero. Point five one two zero is doing one. 
So welcome back to the cockpit, you couldn't have joined us at a better time, we've actually just very briefly escaped the clouds here, although it looks like we're going more or less straight back into the weather. As you'll have seen we did pick up some icing en route, we've been bashing our way through the weather all the way from Coventry, just approaching the western coast of the uh, British mainland now, and still a little bit of icing there on the aircraft at the moment. Just coming up on six miles to run until we're overhead the Wallasey VOR, and then we'll turn out towards the northwest on a heading of 307, inbound towards the Isle of Man. So we'll just wait until we've gone overhead the VOR and then we'll start our uh, descent and start getting the aircraft set up for the arrival. Now, unfortunately, as I say, the, uh, the view's obviously not been particularly great en route. It would have been nice to have cleared some of the weather. It's going to be interesting to see what the uh, forecast is doing down in the Isle of Man. Currently in the real world, it's uh, 10k's viz and broken at 1100 feet so the weather should be fine for our approach but the, the weather in the sim doesn't seem to be particularly great here this morning. Anyway just keeping an eye on that DME, we've got four miles to run now until we hit Wallasey. So at the moment the uh, city of Liverpool should be just somewhere off the right wing. Again though unfortunately not going to be able to see that at the moment. And again, we'll just wait until we're about two miles from the VOR and then we'll start our turn. Now it's looking a bit more like it. Slowly the weather picture is starting to improve. There's a few more breaks in the clouds now. And once again, the weather in the sim just looking absolutely stunning. Quick check on that DME. We'll just wait another 0.5 miles. Okay, so we'll start our turn, we'll come back into Gyro Pilots and we'll come on to a heading of 307. We'll set that up on the OBS. We've got the Isle of Man VR tuned up on the standby, we've got it tuned up on NAV2 as well. And currently showing 70 miles now to run to the Isle of Man, which according to my calculations actually puts us at our top of descent. We'll just wait though until we come onto our heading and then we'll uh, get the aircraft coming down. So there's a heading of 305, that should gently bring us back onto the, uh, the outbound track. And we'll take out the altitude hold and we'll start that descent. Looking for a descent rate of 1,000 feet a minute, we'll leave the thrust on for now. now I'm planning on uh, basically 5 miles per 1,000 feet for the descent. We've got about 10,000 feet here to lose before we enter into the pattern, so 50 miles. And I'd like to add on a uh, 20 mile buffer in the DC-6, especially at the moment whilst I'm still not hugely familiar with the aircraft. Gives us time to get the aircraft slowed down as well, otherwise it's very hard to lose any residual speed in the aircraft. So there's our 1,000 feet per minute rate of descent, we're just coming through 11,500 feet at the moment. And just coming back onto our radial, so we'll go back into localizer on the gyro pilot. We'll switch over to the Isle of Man VOR for now, we'll uh, change over from the Wallasey VOR at around 40 miles. And yeah, just coming back again on that uh, gyro wheel, looks like it's giving us a little bit of a high rate of descent there at the moment. And once again, briefly uh, clearing the weather. Have a quick look at what the pressurisation system's doing. The cabin altitude is coming down again, so that's checked. Still got some ice on the airframe at the moment. We're going to be going back into the clouds. OAT is still minus five, so we'll leave all of the uh, anti-icing systems on for the moment. And just coming up through 10,000 feet, so we'll start keeping a good eye on our airspeed now. We don't want to go above 250 knots, we're doing just above 240 knots there at the moment. 
So we're nicely established back on the radio. We're doing about 900 feet per minute rate of descent there, so just click forward once on the uh, glide wheel. And just coming through 10,000 feet, so that means we've got 8,000 feet to lose, so 40 miles plus our extra 20. We need 60 miles to run, we've got 57 at the moment. That's fine though, that's the direct distance to run. We're going to be flying a bit of a uh, rough and ready DME arc, so plenty of distance. And whilst we're not too busy at the moment, we'll start getting the aircraft set up for the arrival. So as I say, we're going to fly to put us round onto the RLS runway 26. We'll brief the RLS, so it's plate 11-2. Inbound course is 260, frequency will be 111.15. Just cheering that up on the standby for now. Aerodrome elevation, 52 feet. There's a profile check at 4DME, 1360. MDA will be 233. Missed approach, if we need it, will be a continuous climb to 3,000 feet. Straight ahead up to 2,000 feet and then a left turn. Inbound from the south, the MSA is 2,600 feet. We do have a little bit of terrain out to the north. One more. The weather should be interesting. Currently, the real world forecast showing us uh, 9,000 feet broken at 1,000, so more than enough uh, in terms of visibility and cloud layer for the ILS. Again, though, maybe the, uh, the sim weather isn't going to be giving us quite the same, but will hopefully be visual before the minima. I did nominate Liverpool as the alternate, but the weather's actually closed in there, contrary to the forecast, so looks like Belfast would be a better option if we do need to divert. We need uh, 2,200 pounds for the diversion, more or less, and we've got about uh, 3,600 pounds on board at the moment, so about an extra 1,000 pounds before we need to start thinking about diverting. Landing on runway 26, as I mentioned, we'll be vacating off to the right. We'll use the uh, reverse on the props, just be manual braking of course, and then we'll taxi into the bay. So briefing is complete, we'll leave the cruise power setting in just a little bit longer, the uh, speed is slowly coming back there again at the moment. Still got some icing on the airframe. And coming up on 7,000 feet, so about uh, 25 miles. Need about 45 miles to run, we're showing 47 now, so we're just starting to come back onto profile. If anything, just getting a uh, touch low. So we'll come back on the gyro pilot wheel, just a little bit. And we'll change over now to the Isle of Man VOR. And we can tune up the ILS, 111.15. There's six and a half thousand feet, we'll get the descent checks out of the way around five thousand feet. OET just coming up through zero degrees Celsius now. And it does look like that ice is just starting to clear on the uh, the prop spinner there. So as I say, we're going to fly a very rough and ready DME arc, more of a circuit really, but once we hit about 20 miles from the Isle of Man VOR, we'll turn out towards the uh, northeast, basically putting us on a very uh, wide downwind for runway 26. And pressurisation looking good, there's uh, 300 feet now on the cabin altitude. T's and P's are all checked. 40 miles to run inbound to Isle of Man. And we need about uh, 35 miles, so again, looking good on the profile. In fact, if anything, we'll just ease off a little bit more on that rate of descent. We'll give ourselves about 500 feet per minute rate of descent. 
Ideally we don't want to have the aircraft levelled off for too long, but again, I'd rather be level and slowing down than high and fast in the DC-6 as you don't have air brakes, so no opportunity to get the aircraft slowed down without taking flap or gear. And the limit speeds for the flaps and the gear are quite low as well, so it's certainly not a get out of jail free card. Anyway, just coming up through 5,000 feet, so we'll carry out the descent checks. 26 inches, please. Setting 26 inches. So coming back on the uh, power. Automatism flight instruments, cross checked. Seatbelt signs on. On. Engine blow is low. Low. Descent checks are complete. So we're planning to level off at 3,000 feet. We'll uh, we'll fly our circuit and bound towards 26 at 3,000. That'll keep us above the MSA even though we're over the water, so it's not really a concern. And we'll tune up Isle of Man Tower as well. So 119005. Looks like we're just going to have to do that with the air traffic menu. We'll request a full stop landing. Ronald Sweet Tower Air at the Teak 6 is 28 miles southeast, 4,000 feet with Echo to land. Have a quick listen out to the Aegis as well. See what the cloud base is. Yeah, we were always busy for things we'd like to slow. And again, that's not uh, working at the moment for some reason. Okay, so the weather looks like it should be absolutely fine for the ILS. Still have that bug with the ATIS where it will just stay tuned if you let the ATIS run through. Anyway, just coming up on 3,000 feet. So we'll uh, level off. We'll get the gyro pilot altitude hold mode back in. And now that we level off, of course, the speed should start to reduce. We should be picking up the RLS now, so we'll, uh, we'll come back into gyro pilot mode on the gyro pilot. One zero two zero down to three thousand. And we'll tune up the RLS. So just a little bit less than 20 miles to run. We'll uh, peel off towards the north now, as I said. Now we're looking for a course of 260, so we'll set that on the OBS. Blue 
We'll come on to a heading of about 360, that should uh, put us in a pretty nice position to then turn back inbound and intercept the localizer. And the speed, as you can see, just slowly starting to reduce. OAT is about 6 degrees outside now, it sounds like it's just above 10 degrees in the Isle of Man. But the airframe is cleaning up nicely, we're still just about in visible moisture here at the moment though, so we'll, um, so we'll still leave the anti-ice systems on for the time being. And we'll get the wings level again. And just make our way inbound towards the airfield. This will put us out to the east, and as I say, we can then turn inbound to join the loke. It's coming out through 40 miles now, so we'll carry out the in range checks. Swing out slightly further to the northeast, just so we're not on too tight of a uh, turn onto the localizer. I think the gyro pilot's going to struggle a little bit to achieve that. And back at 90 BMEP now, so the speed should start to reduce further. So I think we're pretty good on the heading there, we're doing about 035 degrees. We'll make a left turn now to come in. Roughly on a base leg. You can see we've got about 17.5 uh, miles to run there from the field. I'll take control back from the FE of the uh, throttles and we'll come back to around 70 on the BMEP. Let the speed start coming back. So again, it's going to be quite a long level segment here inbound at uh, 3,000 feet, but I'm more than happy with that. We can start configuring once we go through 174 knots. We're just coming through 175 now, so we can start taking flaps and gear whenever we like, but we'll hold off for the moment. I'll remind needle there at the moment showing up 280. We should be fine, we'll be on our intercept heading well before we reach uh, 260. Yeah, yeah. We'll intercept from heading around uh, 290, that should do us quite nicely. So we'll go wings level. On a heading of 295, that's absolutely fine. Speed just coming back to 165 knots. Now we've got 16 miles to run. Expecting to intercept the glide slope around 10 DME. Looks 
contact the localizer and the glide slope just starting to move so we'll arm up the localizer mode now take flaps 20 the approach is 130 knots so we'll maintain that until we get onto the glide slope And we want to be back broadly at re-approach with the landing checks done just before we inset the glide path. Just waiting on that localizer still at the moment. You can see the RMI needles giving us uh, two seven zero degrees there. And we'll just come up slightly there on the power just to maintain our speed. Still showing 270 on the RMI at the moment, but it is slowly ticking across. Now coming up on uh, 2.5 miles to run until we get onto the glide slope, so everything looking pretty good at the moment. As soon as the localizer comes in we'll arm up the approach mode on the gyro pilots and we can get those landing checks out of the way now. Flaps 20. Setting flaps 20. So there goes the localizer, we'll arm up the glide slope. So we've got approach mode now on the gyro pilots. Let's check three greens. So landing checks are completed, just out to the left of the localizer at the moment. And just letting that speed bleed off now, continuing to take the flaps. So there's flaps full, all the way back on the power, the speed should slowly bleed off back towards VREF, which is 108 knots. 8 miles to run, we are cleared for the landing, not visual just yet, we're still going through that uh, broken layer at 1,100 feet. Temperature's good now, and uh, we are clear of any ice, so we'll get the anti-ice systems off. Now we're nicely established now, both on the localizer and the glide slope. Again, you can see that speed really slow to bleed off, so you have to be very careful getting configured for the approach in the DC-6, otherwise there's no real backing out if you come in too hot and too high. Even fully configured with the uh, power pretty much as far back as I'd be comfortable going. Struggling to get below 110 knots here. Still not visual just yet, but expecting to come visual around 1,000 feet. Again, as a reminder, the minima is 233 feet. And 
just got sight of uh, the island now. So we should see the lead and lights fairly shortly. Uh, you're 92, you're pushing to the roof. Push, push to uh, the reach point, Mike. You're an H1021. Going to push point, Mike. Just passing into the base of the cloud layer again at the moment. And passing to a thousand feet, three and a half miles to run. Looks like it's quite a uh, crosswind actually. Get the wipers on. There's the runway. Anyway, we'll disengage the autopilot. Get the gyro pilot off. So that's actually going to be my first crosswind landing in the DC-6. Should be quite interesting. Yeah, just coming up through 500 feet. Wind pushing us out to the left here. Again, the uh, the weather conditions certainly not what's on the forecast. That makes for an interesting approach. Just a little bit low here, as you can see at the moment. So correcting that. Yeah, just slowly coming back on the throttles. It's touched down. Got the reverses up. Doing about uh, 20 inches there on the reverses at the moment. And cancelling the reverse. So we'll vacate off on the next right, that should be on to taxiway Charlie. Yeah, quite a nice landing overall, the uh, wind trying to pick the wing up there just a bit at the last moment as you can see. Anyway, we'll get off the runway as quickly as we can. I'm not going to bother talking to ground, we'll find our own way over to the uh, parking bay but we'll basically taxi straight ahead on Charlie and then turn onto the western apron. We'll probably park around the back on the eastern apron. We'll get the after landing checks done. Yeah, 92 taxi, Bravo 1, Echo 1, full short of runway 34 and runway 28. After landing checks complete. All clear on the left. So there's no mention of any uh, rain on the real world forecast. And actually, there is a, a bit of a crosswind that's picked up from uh, about half an hour ago. The wind is uh, 310 at 15 knots in the real world, so that looks about right actually. Anyway, this is the, uh, the main apron, as I say. We've got the uh, western apron just off on our left. We'll uh, taxi around the back 
onto the eastern apron. Do our best to avoid our ever helpful ground engineers. United 2 2, when you're ready for departure, contact tower 118 All the best now, bye bye. Now we'll take the next bay on our left. Power United 2 2, heavy is holding short, runway 28 left. United 2 2, uh, good morning, line up runway 28 left. Line up. We'll just taxi a little bit further forward, we'll bring the aircraft to stop, get the part brake on. And gentle on the brakes. Part brake on. Windshield wipers can come off. And we'll start running through the parking checks. Parking brake is set. Cut engines. United 2 2, service wind 150 degrees, 6 knots, 2 left, clear take off. Bye bye. Clip take off, 2 left, United 2 2, heavy. Good uh, morning, actually. Correct, Irish 282, other case, heading 090, out of 1890, other of 1894, now speed. Irish 282, Roger, gentlemen, on the barrier, contact level 120. 120, Irish 28. Being Charlie, I request to expect on vehicles from way 28 left. So that's the shutdown checklist complete, we'll get the cargo doors opened up momentarily and unfortunately it's going to be a very wet and windy walk around for our poor old flight engineer. So there you go guys, I do hope you enjoyed our trip out once again in the PMDG DC-6. I have to say I really enjoyed the trip myself, it's now starting to feel like the sim is really coming together. The live weather whilst not accurate did at least make for an interesting flight and it wasn't too far off the real world conditions. And those icing effects, now that they've been toned down quite a bit in one of the previous updates, I actually think aren't half bad. Overall the flight felt very immersive, it certainly felt like I was having to battle my way through the weather, and I haven't really come across any other flight sim that could do that, at least not in its default state. So that's really nice to see, and again the PMDG DC-6, just an absolute game changer in the sim. It's not without fault, but it certainly changed the sim for me. Up until now I really generally only enjoyed GA VFR flying in the sim, for me this and the fly-by-wire A320, to some degree as well the Aerosoft CRJ, the only other commercial aircraft that I ever flew in the sim. But usually if I wanted to fly something heavy I'd be back off to X-Plane. But as I say ever since I picked up the PMDG DC-6 that's more or less all I've been flying. Anyway guys once again I do hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. If you have any comments or questions for me you can leave those down in the comment section below and I'll always do my best to answer them. But for now, thank you very much, and I'll see you all again soon.